You want to try to explain what we're up to here? Yes. Okay, give it a shot. So we're going to pull all the honey supers that are above the skateboards, and then we're going to remove the skateboards and feed the bees in the in-hive feeder so they can get all fat and sassy. Fat and sassy. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it, yeah. Some of these colonies have grown out of the foundation since we were here on Friday. Yeah, that one. So that's a good thing. Plus this gallon and a half feeder, that'll really encourage them. Uh, if we get the time, we might even come back in four or five days and give them another gallon and a half. The more of this is growing out, the better for us when we're making nukes. This is uh, just a little thinner than one to one. You put, we're putting a thousand pounds of sugar and 250 gallons of syrup. Okay, act normal now. Uh, you, don't want, you don't want us to no. do that. <laughs> I told Selena there's nothing normal about this outfit and she said she wouldn't like us so much if we were all normal. Right. So, Thank you, all right. <laughs> we'll take this load back to the shop and then we'll start phase two, I guess. Uh, yeah, right. right. Yeah. We're at a yard we call War Woman 2. We have two yards on a road called War Woman Road. Leads out of Clayton towards South Carolina. It's really close to the Chattooga River, which is the border between South Carolina and Northeast Georgia, the very upper corner of South Carolina. This might be one of our better sourwood locations this year. These guys actually, for the most part, have three full supers. A few of them only have a half a super in the top box, but they did pretty good kind of surprised me because I have several yards north of Clayton that didn't do all that well. See what you got, John. Oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Thanks. The bottom two supers were very full the day we came and put these third stories on. That box is about half full, so this colony made two and a half. Nothing wrong with that, and it tastes pretty good. Just some of our better tasting honey this year. Some locations made a lot of sourwood, but it doesn't taste like it normally does. I'm not quite sure what to make of that. These were some colonies that were double deeps and then got shipped down into a single. So, they did all right. We have John and Carla from over by Hendersonville, North Carolina. What's your little town called? Hooper's Creek. Say it again. Hooper's Creek. Hooper's Creek. So, Hooper's Creek, Hooper's Creek Bee, Company. Bee Company. Yeah, they got a few hundred colonies over there in North Carolina, and they're just here, here for the fun of it today. Really old mountain cabin up there behind the bee yard. This area is uh, very beautiful. Raven County, Georgia. Their claim to fame, for better or for worse, is this is where the movie, much of the movie Deliverance was filmed, and some of it was filmed on the Chattooga River. Um, many of the locals were in that movie. The fellow that played the banjo, the young man that played the banjo, he was local. He was a short order cook in town, and. He worked at Walmart in his older age as a greeter. And several of the people in that banjo scene were local folks. And the local folks weren't entirely happy with how they were depicted in that movie. Okay, this yard is set up exactly the same way as that yard that was shown in our video setting up a new bee yard. We treated it the same way. We shook the bees down into singles and gave them a foundation for the most part without an excluder. And they did good. Most of this foundation is drawn out. We never did get back here to put an excluder on it. And what's interesting is that 
Uh, there's no brood in any of these boxes. It, it just kept the brood down in the bottom story, even though there wasn't any excluders on them. So I'm glad to see that. And we're just putting an escape on each colony. Come back and get these supers in a couple days. Seth, see if you can show, see these cells right here? See if you can get in there and get a really good shot of the larva in there. And if you look closely, those larvae are not sitting in a pool of brood food. In fact, some of them have almost none at all. And that is an indication of poor nutrition. So it's a lack of pollen, basically. I mean, I see a little pollen on the edge of the comb, but we see no pollen coming in. And uh, a lot of the colonies, a lot of the nukes in this group look just like this. So if they had good nutrition, those larvae would be sitting in a pool of brood food. So we're gonna have to keep, we're gonna have to keep a very close eye on this. Um, I know we have this field corn that's gonna bloom soon, or not bloom, tassel, which is where they get the pollen. But corn is really deficient in a lot of stuff. Corn pollen is not uh, really good nutrition. Most windblown pollens are not good nutrition. I suppose there are probably a few, but I don't know of any. Corn pollen is a windblown pollen. So is pine pollen and many others. And as far as I know, most of those are not premium nutrition. The type that stick to the bees when they're uh, visiting flowers, that's usually better nutrition. Anyway, we're be we'll have to pay real close attention to what's going on here. I don't want them to continue in this state very long. We could give them pollen patties or pollen supplement patties, but I hate to do that this time of year because although I don't see hardly any beetles in our colonies, it only takes a few to create havoc in those patties that can really make a mess of them. So we'll, see. we'll, we'll be keeping track of this. These nukes were made up about five weeks ago and now we're transferring them into single story boxes because the nukes are full. We get a real good take here. And we don't get a really good take because that bee yard is sitting right next to them. We get a really good take because this is surrounded in three or four directions with other bee yards that are strong, well-established colonies. And that's really the way to get best mating um, a lot of people rely on the drones in the yard where their nukes are set. But they've done studies and found out that uh, when there are ample drones in all directions that uh, very little of the semen actually turns out to be from drones from the same bee yard that the queens originate in. So we have three spots for mating nukes that we try to accomplish that. And the yards out and around this yard are large too, just like the one down there. The sourwood flow is just about over here, has a few more days, maybe five or six at the most. And uh, all the good colonies made two supers. Pretty, pretty solid right up to the top.
<laughs> Look at the propolis on that thing. Yep, that's propolis right there. Thick, thick propolis. See what this one did. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. We'll be pulling this honey off in about a week. As soon as, soon as they're done, we get the sourwood off as soon as they're done. We don't want other odds and end to, ends to mix up with it. These are for the most part Caucasian bees. And you can see, I don't go, I don't put supers on towards the end of the flow. I really like the last little bit of honey just to kind of go into the brood nest. We're not trying to plug the brood nest out, but we are trying to make sure we're leaving them with some food. And the way to do that is to not keep stacking empty supers on right to the end of the flow. Let them tighten up towards the end. What's up, John? Uh, checking this nuke. <laughs> checking this nuke. Loaded with food. Yeah. Well, they all are. Nobody's starving to death anytime soon. <laughs> no, that's the last thing they're worried about right now. They're trying to find something to they really. Selena has run across several of these nukes that have something worth mentioning. It, it, I don't know if the camera can really pick this up. We'll see. This is fermenting honey in the comb. It's so warm and humid, mainly humid, that the bees are having a hard time in some of these nukes keeping the honey from fermenting while it's ripening. Now, I'm not going to panic about this because as these, grow, as these nukes grow up and get larger and fill the box better, uh, I think they're going to handle that. Bees can actually metabolize a little bit of alcohol just like we as humans can. But just like we as humans, uh, too much will make them sick. When I used to take bees to South Georgia for cotton production, I, had, I would see fermenting honey in the comb often. Quite frankly, with, with uh, humidity and heat like this, I'm amazed the bees can dry the honey out at all. So this is like your, what, your third nuke you've seen this in? Yeah. Yeah, so a little more than we're used to seeing, but I'm, again, I'm not in a panic about it. I think the bees will clean it up and get it right. We also have a cooler, drier spell coming up after this weekend. The weather forecast shows much less humidity. That'll be their chance to try to clean that mess up. Um, interesting. Thank you.